I recently finished my first year as an MBA student at Wharton and it has been a crazy year, meeting hundreds of people, learning how to be a student again, moving to a new city, and I never thought I'd live in Philadelphia. And so today I just wanna share with all of you after doing a lot of reflection, how my first year went. And so in today's video, I'm gonna first walk you guys through the flow of the first year and then go into what under and over delivered during my experience. And so with that said, let's first go through the flow of the first year. To explain what I mean by the flow of the first year, my opinion is that pretty much every business school is probably gonna go through the same similar four phases that I'm about to discuss, with the first phase kind of just being overall excitement in August and, some, and September where everyone's just meeting each other, there's a lot of parties and a lot of drinking, and people are just excited. The second phase is dominated by recruiting, which starts usually around October and lots of companies are coming to campus. Students who have just agreed to pay around $200,000 for tuition now have to actually secure the bag and land a job. And so everyone is super, super busy with recruiting. Not everyone can hang out all the time and people are prepping for consulting, banking, tech, and etc. The third phase is winter break from December to January and for Wharton we had about a month and a half off. A lot of people are still very very busy with recruiting because you have to do your final Super Day interviews during the first weeks of January. But with that said people are traveling, spending some time away from all these friends they just made or traveling with them. And I think this is a pretty interesting time because you just went through three-ish months of very very intensely meeting a lot of people and going through or going, getting through like a very hectic schedule every day. And now you just have time to decompress. Oh, what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I needed to decompress with all this shit going on. The fourth and last phase is where everyone starts to get jobs. And so February to April, people are a little bit more happy and less stressed out because this huge weight is lifted off of their shoulders. Now, with that said, with the current market environment, it still was really tough for a lot of my classmates and a lot of them were still recruiting even just a few weeks before summer started. And so I would have to kind of caveat that, but generally I'd say the campus becomes a lot more lively, more fun events being planned, um, especially in March and April. And so the campus just becomes a little bit more like the first phase. With that said, I would say there's also a very key difference between first and second semester, which is that in the first semester, you're just meeting tons of people. And I remember just hanging out with people, trying to get to know them and just thinking in the back of my head, like, will these people be the ones that I get to know and really become close friends with? Because you barely know people when you first meet them. Whereas in second semester, I felt a lot more chill. I felt like I had my different communities around campus, people who I really liked and gotten to know a lot better. And with that said, you also, a lot of dirt starts to unsurface. What's this I smell? Could it be dirt? What I mean by this is that in the first semester, you just meet a lot of people and they're all super nice. Everyone seems like a good person. And then you start to see people for who they kind of truly are. And I still think the majority of people at my school have been great. It's just that some people, you see who like the creepy dudes are, for example, or the sloppy girls or the ones who are always at the center of drama or the ones who do unethical things. So those kinds of things start to surface up. And at least in my second semester, it was a lot more clear which kind of or which people I needed to stay away from. Aside from all that, I had a really great first year. I thought the second semester was even more fun than the first and probably because I got to travel a lot more with my classmates. I went to Kenya, which you can watch in this video here. And if you're just curious about what a week in the life kind of looked like for an MBA student, you can check out this video right here. Now, if you're watching this video because you're interested in going into business school and one of the obstacles in your way is studying for the GMAT like it was for me in the past, then I have a great resource for you called Target Test Prep, also known as TTP. I credit TTP a lot for helping me get a 750 on the GMAT. And when I was looking for the best resources to study for the exam, I came across TTP a lot on Reddit. And what I really liked about it is that it takes a topic by topic approach to make sure that you're prepared for any question that pops up on the exam. Here's how it works. For both quant and verbal, TTP breaks down all of the individual topics that appear on the GMAT, and with them come lessons and practice tests ranging from easy, medium to hard that lets you hone your skills and master each topic. TTP is a one-stop shop that covers both quant and verbal sections of the GMAT, and it's the only company on GMAT Club with a triple digit five-star rating. TTP allows you to create a customized study plan so you can really just focus on your weaknesses or build on your strengths. And if you'd like to check out TTP for five days for just one feel free to use my link down in the description below. All right, now next up, let's go through what under delivered from my first year. 
First of all, really quick shout out to Barry for asking this question on Instagram. And I try to give the people what they want. And in the future, I'm gonna be asking pretty often what people wanna learn about in my future videos. And so feel free to check out Rare Liquid on Instagram if you're interested. With that said, I'm gonna go through three things that under-delivered and over-delivered. And so the first thing that under-delivered were the classes. And that was mainly because I think the first year, usually for a lot of business schools, really focus on the core curriculum, which is, in my opinion, kind of boring stuff that I already learned, like accounting, finance, marketing, you know, all these classes that for me as someone who already has a business degree, isn't super interesting. Um, I will say that probably I'm guessing in my second year, uh, the classes are gonna be a lot more interesting actually because I'm gonna be taking electives that I want. And I actually made a video about my academic uh, experience in my first year in this video, which you can check out if you wanna learn more about the academics of MBA life. The second underwhelming thing so far has been the lack of quality conversations. And this kind of sounds worse than it is, but it is very important in my view. So let me kind of explain. So I'd say almost everyone for the most part at school are really good at small talk and i consider myself like an average small talker i can keep conversations going but at certain points i feel like i'm just asking questions for the sake of asking questions and i feel like there are people who are really good at con just conversing talking about this or that or nothing kind of I feel like I'm more introverted and uh, reflective and better at asking those kind of insightful questions, but those have to be done in the right settings, right? Where usually it's just a few people or it's just one-on-one, -on -one. but a lot of events at Wharton are, you know, minimum five to 10 people or there's hundreds of people. And so with your busy schedules, with academics, recruiting, for me, managing my business, there's just not a lot of time to always have one-on-one -on -one conversations. And so that's where I feel like, um, and also, sorry, one last thing I'd add is that especially in your first semester, you're just getting to know everyone. So you can't necessarily just start asking those deep, hard hitting questions right away, right? So uh, that's something that I felt like was a bit underwhelming in my first year, but maybe in my second year, it won't be because I'll really know people better and it'll be easier to have those kinds of conversations. The third and last thing that was underwhelming in my first year was the lack of time you have to really reflect and think because I feel like a lot of people come into business school thinking it, thinking about it as a two year break where you're just able to think a lot about what you wanna do next and you know all this reflection and time off and whatever, right? But you really don't get a lot of time off uh, during school in particular. You have, as I mentioned, classes, meeting people, events, blah, yada, yada, yada. And the schedule just is so packed. And a lot of times you have to choose between like, do I wanna to go to this uh, call that's happening or panel or should I skip some class for that? or like you're, you're, should I go to like one club thing or a different club thing or a friend's birthday or this friend's birthday and you go to event, event, event. And so you just don't have a lot of time. All right, so those were the things that under delivered. Now let's flip to the positive side where I talk about what over delivered. The first is the super lax and chill academic structure. Especially at Wharton, you get Fridays off no matter what. And so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're guaranteed a three day weekend. And my friends would always tell me at school, like, yeah, I, sometimes I spend just a few hours outside of class working on academics. And I would think like, you know, how is that possible? And, you know, I'd really say that the academic structure of most MBA programs, especially when they have non-grade disclosure, really makes it so that you can focus in on the classes that you care about or not really focus on classes at all during certain stretches of weeks if you are super busy recruiting or working or, you know, just wanna socialize a lot more instead. And so that part has really over-delivered for me. The second thing that's over-delivered is just the sheer diversity of everything, whether that's the people you meet who come from all different countries, the huge number of clubs, whether you want to learn more about wine or tennis or at Wharton, there's a really popular club called Hockey Club that just has hundreds of people and you would never think of playing hockey, right? But hundreds of Wharton people do. I personally don't. Then there's the huge number of travel opportunities where you can go to pretty much every single continent in the world and you those travel experiences also range from just like student-led ones that are just fun and then ones where you're actually meeting business leaders. And then there's the sheer diversity of different courses you can take. I'm personally, next next year, I'm excited to take different electives like negotiations, advanced private equity, the power of grit, those kind of classes. And so there's just so much 
diverse. Oh, so sorry. Last thing, of course, diversity of career opportunities. Um, MBA is great for if you want to kind of pivot to a different industry. And so whether it's banking, consulting, tech, whatever you're interested in, there's just so much diversity of anything that you want to do for these two years. And that's really over delivered for me. The third thing that's really over delivered is just how fun the experience has been so far. And honestly, I've had a lot of fun in my life uh, in college, high school, uh, when I was working. And I also just, you know, everyone always says that MBA is going to be the best two years of your life. And I don't know yet if it really will be because I have so many years ahead. But I will say that what I really, really like is just that everyone is just trying to have a good time and everyone's so open. So what I mean by that is whether it's, you know, I when me asking some classmates like, hey, do you want to work on something for Ray Liquid together? So it's more like career related. People are just so interested and open to the idea. And then whether it's, you know, going to new countries um, or trying out all these different <laughs> meals that I make, you know, like everyone is just so open to new experiences and just willing to meet each other. And it creates a very... I don't know how deep it goes, but at least on the surface, a very positive environment overall. And people just want to get to know each other, have fun and have a good time. And, you know, it's not always like that everywhere. So I'd say that's a really great part that's over delivered. All right, so that's how my first year of MBA went. And I know I talked a lot about how crazy the entire experience is and how busy it is. And so if you wanna learn more about what a week in the life of an MBA student looks like, then that'll be the video in the next screen. Also wanted to give you guys a friendly reminder if you're interested in getting an MBA yourself, I'm building out my own how to get into MBA course that I think is gonna be super valuable for anyone interested in applying. With that said, thank you guys all so much for watching. Hope to catch you all in the next video. Thanks so much and peace out. Thank you.